Hey fun fans, before we get to this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been spreading the word of fun to help us stay Lob Light Independent through your donations, bits, and subscriptions, and also to the sponsors of this segment, PTC and Striker. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. And Striker is looking for first and fun fans to join their team because they want to help support you in your first journey. Help develop solutions for current and future problems like the new emergency relief bed. Get details on how to join their team at careers.strykr.com forward slash first. Uh, so this was a pretty creative robot. I mean, uh, take a look at here. We've got an elevator with an arm on it. Uh, that's already a couple degrees of freedom, and then because that wasn't enough, they had to mount the entire thing on a turntable. Uh, so they really kind of went for everything they could imagine on this robot. Uh, and to be honest, they did a pretty good job of executing. Um, they did a really decent job of uh, kind of thinking through kind of where all the stresses would be going throughout this whole system, putting extra material and strength where it needed to go. Um, but even though I could tell, you know, there was a lot of thought that went into that. Uh, that's a huge moment arm on that elevator. And, and I just kind of started, you know, doubting to myself that maybe this robot would, you know, have some issues being a little bit too floppy when it wasn't meant to be. Um, but <laughs> this was a really, really clever overall concept. Uh, it was packaged pretty well. Really liked the, the uh, turntable elevator because we... Clearly didn't see enough of those uh, for deep space. We had to find a way to play football with one as well. But, uh, <laughs> great robot. All right, Mr. N. Uh, you know, first of all, the uh, the weightlifter on this looks like a bird of prey from Star Trek, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but it actually combines a couple of different elements that I think are going to make it more effective. And since those weights are so heavy and since this is focused on that weight, um, I like to see that they're trying to get it uh, as securely as possible. So I appreciate that. I also think that that doing the uh, the turret might be a little bit of overkill. Um, but having a robot that is effectively designed to play with one game element can be so good. And especially an element like this one, where the way the game is designed, this can almost like put a chokehold onto other teams. If you can play quickly and effectively with those with those weights, you're gonna make it much more difficult for a team that's focused on kicking those footballs. Um, so I really like that part of this robot. Parker? Yeah, I didn't know what order was, thanks. Um, <laughs> the, uh, this competition, especially at this level, will favor teams that uh, not only uh, have great detail of their designs, uh, have well thought out designs, but also on top of those two are also creative. And this robot does seem a bit uh, kind of funky going into it. And I agree, I think the probably biggest weak point of this design is how huge the moment on that arm is and how they could probably have gone with a better gearing uh, solution for that arm. Uh, the uh, Just the kind of creativity and uh, gall to put that whole thing on a turntable um, is, it. it it's cool. And they, for the most part, executed really well on that creative concept. I still think that uh, this is one of the stronger suction grabbers out there. Uh, I still think that uh, it, it had a single, I think, like foam or, or something molded piece with two different nozzles coming out of it. But that was still one suction area. And I think with a softer plastic game piece like this one, um, having a single suction area, despite how big it is, if there's any kind of, you know, lack of seal, you're not going to be holding that 10 pound weight. So I think uh, that was uh, that was better than a few of the other teams that used little cups, but uh, still a, a little bit of a weak point there. Um, but overall, I, I see, like yeah, the, they covered it well. This is uh, executed very well and was a very fun design to, to judge. All right, end us off, Brant. 
Yeah, so I thought this robot was very interesting. I think I just, like, am probably going to end up echoing a lot of what Mr. N said. And, like, you know, we've seen in games time and time before, especially in, like, uh, sorry, we're going to go a little FRC history here. But, like, in 2017, um, 971, uh, or sorry, 973, their first pick, and they ended up winning Houston Champs, was just a gear robot that could cycle gears like nobody's business. Um, And I think that this is kind of what a lot of the judges, including myself, saw in this robot. Um, it's just a very good weight cycler, and that's what they're going to be doing, and they're going to be very good at it. Just a few things that I didn't really like is I'm not really sure um, how necessary three Falcon 500s on each side of the drivetrain is. Um, that seems a bit uh, bit much, um, especially with how powerful the Falcon 500s are. Um, just a lot of power going into that drivetrain. Um, you're not a defense robot, so I'm kind of confused as to why that was. Um, and then also, I just... Whenever you're going full field cycles with these weights, um, I don't really see the need um, to have the elevator on a turret. Obviously, it's great detail. You guys really executed it very well. Um, But just strategy-wise, games where you're going full field distance, um, I'm not sure that I really see um, the reasoning for having it on an elevator since you have that long distance to turn around. Um, But overall, really good robot. I obviously... Not a huge fan of the suction cup, but I think that we've already mentioned that a bit too much. Um, but overall, nice robot. Uh, good job. Yeah, and I, I saw someone mentioned in the chat, I think it was some, uh, Paul, uh, mentioned, you know, on the defense note, you have a 10-pound weight in your robot. That's going to add to the inertia, you know. So this this robot could play some great defense if it came down to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to move us to our 14th ranked team, Team 596, safety third from Garrett. Mr. N, kick us off. All right. Well, one of the things that I love about this robot is that uh, they used uh, pneumatically actuated uh, wheeled intake for the weights. And with all of these robots that came in with the with the suction cup that probably isn't going to work so hot, um, I really appreciated that they were using uh, a much more tried and true and tested design. I think that the suction cup thing has really only happened since 2018. Prior to that, it was kind of a joke. And um, the uh, the use of a wheeled intake for just about any game object is is pretty wise. And so I think that this is a, a very good uh, uh, intake for the for the weight. Um, I also like that the uh, the uh, indexer for the footballs is kind of a loose feel to it. It looks like it's going to be able to get the balls into the shooter. I don't really think the shooter is that great, but I think that the the uh, intake and the index are good. Also, I like the color scheme. <laughs> Parker? Yeah, I, I, oh. Sorry, um, so I, I really thought actually uh, this was a interesting robot, but I identified you know a few places that maybe they could have done a little bit better. Um, Primarily, again, you know, it's it's coming back to something I mentioned on other robots was pivots uh, for the wrist on the weight claw. I, it just didn't strike me as being robust enough to hit, to uh, survive, you know, pretty rigorous gameplay. Um, and I, I really wasn't sure what to think about the feed for the shooter. Um, but again, the, given that this game is, you know, so tremendously unprecedented and untested uh, for what we've seen in this competition... Um, I, I'm willing to be convinced that it would work when, once I'm able to see it. Um, I also, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but looking at this robot, they did use pneumatics in a lot of places. I didn't see any air tanks or a compressor on the robot. Um, so that was something that I had identified, but, you know, we'll see. But overall, it was a, it was a nice robot that I thought was alright, pretty good. And now to Parker? Uh... Yeah, th- this robot, um, I'm not sure if uh, I wasn't looking at the stream, but uh, the front, like, isometric view of this robot, I think, looks just really cool. It's very striking because they have this kind of wheeled claw. Um, and then I think stylistically they put kind of ears into their uh, side, uh, the, the kind of side of the elevator, and it made it actually look kind of like some mantis or <laughs> animal or something. And that was just a cool stylistic yeah. choice. And also the pocketing. Um, is is pretty cool, kind of a shark fin pattern. Like there were some aesthetic details in here that were pretty solid. Um, that w- that was pretty nice. Uh, I agree. The pneumatics was a bit of a, a, a kind of 
issue. I didn't see it either, and uh, that was kind of disappointing because otherwise the robot was really cool looking and it uh, functioned pretty well, and it really held on to the, uh, the, uh, the weights effectively. Yeah. And it shot through the, the elevator, which is cool. All right, and ended off with Brant. Yeah, so I really like this robot. I thought that, um, you know, as the other judges have hopped on, I, I'm really not a huge fan of the shooter, um, which we didn't just see a singular flywheel. Um, maybe we could have seen, um, so, or sorry, um, the like wheels just on top of it, so we could have seen um, something with some angle to it. Um, and also going through the elevator, I'm not sure how much I really like that because that really limits where your elevator can be. So, um, but overall, you know, I like the claw. I like the combo with the pneumatics and the wheel and the claw. I thought that, that was very good. And I also like the four bar um, on the intake. I thought that looked really clean. Um, yeah. All right. That's going to move us into our 13th ranked team from Team 250, Cheesecake Mechanum Swerve, from Chunchi, Matthew, and Raul. Parker, could you kick us off? Thanks for catching me. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, let's move to Brent. Okay, so for uh, this robot, um, I thought that I really like the color scheme. Um, you know, the black and purple. Um, I'm a big fan of that. It looks really nice. Um, I'm usually not a big fan of purple, but I think that looks really nice with the black, um, something that I can't say about all the other robots um, but overall this robot I mean you just like look at the main render and you're like geez what is going on in this thing and like I think that a lot of people in stream are probably thinking the same thing um, but once you get to open up the STL to this robot and really see a lot more I hope that the team uh, ends up releasing it. I think that's really good for anybody to look at the detail on this robot is insane you know they thought of truly everything um, and I I kind of like the catapult idea. I think that shooting um, the balls with wheels and feeding it into those wheels can kind of be a bit difficult. Um, but the catapult was something different, something that we didn't see from a lot of other teams. I think that we'll see a few more coming up here um, with catapults. Um, but I really like the weight claw. Um, I like the guides into the center pole. I think that's going to make it a lot easier on the driver. Um, and... I, the one thing that I didn't really like is how you're intaking balls and weights all on the same side. That seems like a bit of uh, difficulty for the programmers. Um, so, you know, as Sam said earlier, you do go to school with the programmers. Um, so, but overall, yeah, I really like this robot. Great complexity um, to it with um, keeping it, like, low on the interference. But, yeah. All right, let's move back to Parker. Sorry, Skype just crashed when I unmuted myself. Um, the uh, this robot I felt looked really cool, and when I first loaded in the step file, especially um, in just uh, just without any textures, and it was just gray, it really highlighted how much like pocketing and truss work there was in a lot of the design. And I, uh, if anything, uh, maybe some feedback is that that doesn't come across in the renders. Like when that thing is just in the gray, like lined outline SolidWorks view. It is, yeah, that one actually kind of looks like it, but still, it would look really impressive, kind of steampunky, uh, and and uh, there was a lot of clever design. It wasn't just all looks, but there was uh, really smart ways of integrating the systems and, and kind of a lot of machine parts and stuff like that. And then I agree with what the uh, other judges said, uh, the very big positive locking weight claw, uh, the catapult. I It might be a it probably isn't as fast, but I think it could be a consistent feed um, as long as it they can seat the, the the footballs every time uh, and also have enough velocity to launch them, which I uh, didn't really comment on positively or negatively because I just didn't have really much experience with them and didn't know how that would work. But uh, it was well designed. All right, Matt, let's hear it. So catapults are clearly um, pretty controversial. Uh, I actually really liked it. We, we saw a lot of robots um, for this competition that were using a very conventional uh, flywheel setup or, or a twin wheel setup. Um, and it, it's just, it introduces so many unknowns because in handling these you know, irregularly shaped footballs, uh, it's, it can be very difficult for us to predict uh, how exactly they're going to respond to just being treated like normal, um, you know, balls might be. But 
a catapult is an example of a mechanism that doesn't really care what shape your uh, object is that you're trying to launch. And for that reason, I actually gave it a lot of points as being a robot that I thought stood a very good chance of performing pretty well. Um, so I actually really liked the uh, catapult. Nice job. I thought there was a lot of pretty good engineering on this robot. Uh, generally was you know really strong where it needed to be. The one weak point that I really wasn't sure about um, was the feeding system for the catapult. You know, where, where this robot, I think, was really strong uh, was in using a catapult to handle a shape that may not respond very well to a conventional type of shooter, um, but it was a very conventional feeder, and I think that may, that may really be the weak point for this robot. But overall, I thought the concept was awesome. Uh, we didn't see very many catapults being submitted, uh, and I, I thought this one was pretty well done. Yeah, Mr. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm still on the, the catapult question myself. Um, the last two years that the catapult was a really viable game was 2016 and 2014. And that's when you had just one game object. So um, I don't know. Uh, this, this game with a lot of footballs, yes, it's going to give you more consistency but it's also going to slow it down. So I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. However, um, I do love this robot. I think it's uh, really complete, and I think it's really beautiful, and I think it's great that they show something different. Well, uh, I personally like catapults. Just just throwing my two cents in here quick. But that's going to move us to our 12th ranked team, which is Team 351 Arm Gang Gang from Venka and Mur Anal. So 351 uh, was a pretty interesting robot. Um, I couldn't tell if the Swerve was a custom design or not, but I liked it anyway, so nice job. Um, using suction cups to pick up weights on a virtual floor bar, uh, that's pretty ambitious, and I would love to see it work if it does work. Um, there are a few places I thought the design could have been better. Uh, more support around the shooter wheels was somewhere that I identified. Uh, but very high levels of detail. This team even catted in their zip ties on their motor controllers. Um, there was some of their sheet metal was our, uh, could have been done better, uh, but overall, cool concept. Yeah. Mr. Ren? Um, so my notes, uh, my first note is that the weight mechanism won't work, and they would do fine to abandon weights in their second round as built. I do like the idea of using a virtual four bar, but just with the suction cups, I just don't think this one's going to work that well. However, I do like their football shooter, and I do like the overall design. All right. Uh, Parker? Yeah, I, I pretty much echo Mr. N. Um, uh, the, the weight mechanism wasn't solid, but judged just as, even just as a, a, a football shooter, it was uh, very well. The detail was exceptional. Um, and also, what I liked about this robot is that they, they put the electronics right where they would be uh, accessible and easy to service. I saw a lot of teams just kind of tuck them underneath the robot or in weird places, which can work. But uh, there are a few teams that put in things like uh, accessible electronics, battery latches, bumper quick-release pins, the little things that you actually really want on a real FRC robot. And just because this is a virtual game doesn't mean you're not looking for that stuff. And this team designed the robot with that in mind. I really like that. Yeah, Brent, what do you think? Yeah, I thought that the, uh, I really liked the intake on this robot. Um, I thought that that was pretty unique. Um, obviously, suction cups, that's all that we need to say. Um, and then I thought that the virtual four bar, you know, they seemed like they were running out of space uh, in the back and they didn't really have a lot of space. So I think virtual four bar may have been the only way that this team could have gone with their configuration that they had. So I thought that was a really unique uh, solution. You know, we have seen virtual four bars before, but um, we don't see a ton of them. Um, and I think that they're uh, something really cool that I like to see on robots. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to be able to hold uh, the weight up and the stall torque on the motor, obviously. Um, but overall, I really liked it. Um, just the feed system um, was the main thing with the balls up to the shooter. just seems really complex to me, and I had a hard time wrapping my mind around um, how that one would work. But overall, um, really nice robot. Okay, moving into our 11th ranked team, which is from Team 62 of veteran for the Catathon, Team Diode from FRC Team 1360. Mr. N, can you kick us off? 
Yeah, so um, I was the main judge on this one and a few things that I really liked about it. I liked the uh, vertical spindexer, uh, the Rolodex style of indexing the balls. Um, I think that they have also done something unique among all the robots that I looked at, which is that they decided to shoot the balls uh, width-wise. So they're just going to roll the balls through without trying to turn them around and do a spiral. I think that's simple. I think it's elegant. And I think it's not overdone. That's a good way to get footballs out here. We're not trying to shoot, you know, 50-yard long bombs. We're trying to get... Uh, you know, 10, 20 feet, 15 feet in front of us. And I think that was really, really smart. Um, I think that the uh, intake seems a little bit narrow. Um, I'm not sure about the weight mechanism. I do like I do like the, the intake on the weights, but I just think that the moment arm on is pretty long. Yeah. Parker? I, I mostly agree. Uh, very little else uh, to say on this one. Um, but uh, the... Uh, the, the spindexer was really cool. Um, I am not sure how they shoot, how footballs shoot sideways. Uh, I know, uh, I think it was Brant that just, just said that um, he didn't have great success with that. Um, I thought it could be done um, and was, was a bit wary. And there's some teams that tried that, but this one especially aligns the balls really well before shooting them that way. Uh, they have a really robust shooter mechanism and a few of the other teams that kind of just had a shooter that would possibly fit a football sideways uh we're <laughs> good but this robot was designed to like really shoot it a specific way and i think that was stood out brent yeah so um this was the team that i competed on whenever i was in the catathon um back in my <laughs> days with brian so um but overall i really liked the robot um i thought that uh i didn't really like the intake into the big wheel thing um I thought that that was a bit suspect, um, and I just can't really see the robot or the balls going in there correctly every single time. It's kind of a hopefully the balls go in like this type of thing. Um, and then one other thing that I noticed um, was on the adjustable hood is that there was no real way to lock the hood um, into place, and the reduction on the hood was also kind of not sufficient for an adjustable hood. So I worried about uh, balls basically going through and messing um, with the angle of the hood. So that was just, it's a really small issue. Um, and then just the moment of an uh, inertia on the back uh, arm was just another concern. That's quite a long arm you got on the back. Uh, but overall, good robot. Glad to see um, the team that I started on is uh, still alive and going strong. All right, yeah, Matt. I don't think I have a whole lot to add that hasn't already been said about this robot. I thought the uh, method of indexing footballs was really creative, and I liked seeing it. Um, but if you guys are going to call your robot diode, we're going to need some more data sheet specs on the robot. For example, the <laughs> reverse breakdown voltage wasn't given, and I had trouble uh, with that. But hey, really cool robot, and got a lot of creativity points from me for sure. All right, and apparently Brian only catted the bumpers, so we'll take that as we will. <laughs> so that's going to move us to our top 10, starting off with Team 600, Hot Pocket, from Brian, Kevin, and Wesley. Mr. N, can you kick us off? Yeah, um, well, I like the suction cup on this one better than others that I've seen, but it's still a suction cup. Uh, it is... <laughs> it is a fine looking machine. That's basically what I have to say about this one. It is really beautiful. Um, I like the renders a lot. I really do like sort of the, uh, the off angle shot that it takes. Um, I think it's very compact. It's, I think it's one of the only robots I saw that was really trying to go through that, uh, that low bar as it gets lower. Um, so yeah, it's a really beautiful attempt and I really like this robot. Okay, Parker. Yeah, um, it is it, the the detail was there. Uh, the overall concept very solid. Um, the one thing that I'll take a bit a second to call out is that uh, I'm pretty sure this team had a, a camera on their robot, and typically in catathons, I like to see that because teams considering and you know designing for sensing is always something to be encouraged. Uh, I don't believe this the game had any specific vision targets called out in the game manual or on the field. Um, and so I was torn between, you know, rewarding that or saying, well, I guess you don't need it. Uh, but in, 
uh, the, there was a lot of details like that about thinking about control uh, and thinking about driving that, that made this robot come together. <laughs> I think Sam is frozen, so I'll I'll go ahead. Um, so for this robot, uh, you know, I I really like the way that the robot looked. I thought this was honestly maybe my one of my favorites as far as just the way that the robot looks. Um, I really liked how the elevator kind of stood above the intake. Um, I thought that was really cool, really unique. And then one other thing on the just on the shooter is I just I really wish that maybe there weren't like two shooter wheels. Instead, you just had one bigger wheel because from my experience um, on our team building football shooting robots, the bigger the wheel, um, usually the better. Um, so I don't really know how I feel about having what looks like maybe like a three or four inch wheel on the end um, there. But overall, really nice looking robot. Um, looked really good. Really impressive. So uh, I also caught the camera thing, Parker. I, I was kind of like, I'm not sure why, you know, they've got a camera given that there are no vision targets, but, you know, maybe they're hoping to use just a remote camera feed for helping their driver aim or something like that. Um, but I really wasn't sure we need a turret to shoot footballs. That said, it was still pretty cool. Um, and I think overall it was a, a pretty well-polished robot. Okay, so that's going to bring us to our ninth ranked team, which is Team 602 MKI Squad from Sarath. So can we have Parker kick us off? Yeah. Uh, this robot was clever um it was funky looking at first uh they have an entire hopper on a pivot uh with multiple degrees of freedom um and with things like this the first thing i try to do is figure is like zone in on something uh about like why won't this work what what is kind of silly about this design because there's always huge moments and there's always uh controls issues with something that big and the reduction on this arm is actually pretty high. Um, the, uh, the They use multiple motors. The gearing is pretty solid. And so I couldn't just discount this kind of crazy arm like a lot of others. Uh, and and so that was, was pretty cool. Um, the shooter uh, was also a catapult. Um, and they used a cam-driven catapult, which was something that I don't think I've ever seen a anywhere on like an FRC uh, environment before. There probably have been, but I just haven't seen it. And that surprised me as being pretty neat. Um, it looked a little bit flimsy. Uh, the, the little kind of catapult dish and the whole kind of assembly, there's a lot of pocketing, a lot of tiny things, and you're pushing a lot of force through a very tiny little cam. Wait, this might actually not be the cam robot. I'm sorry if it isn't. <laughs> Oops. Uh, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, but either way, the, the designs were clever. Uh, it was cool. They're weight locking with single kind of piston that locked in to the groove was clever as well. And uh, I would really like to see this one uh, built or used because a lot of that stuff, I don't really know how it works, but I'm really excited to see it. <laughs> Brant? Yeah, I thought that uh, I'm probably going to just echo a lot of the same points that the other judges said. I thought that one, like my personal favorite part about this robot, um, or like most effective, was just the use of that pancake cylinder. Just very simple to log into the groove. As uh, Parker just said, I thought that was really cool. Um, and something that like I could definitively say that I have confidence in that not going out because those pancake cylinders have a lot, a lot of force in them. Um, one thing that mainly was my concern is just like you have all those footballs in that massive hopper looking thing. And I worry about jams in there. And honestly, the biggest thing with this robot is just your moment of, or sorry, not your moment of inertia, your center of gravity is just going to be shifting around so much um, depending on where that is. Um, so I, I just almost worry about this robot maybe tipping over um, or something like that. 
overall really like the swerve drive i thought that since everything is kind of almost located in corners um swerve drive was the only way to go because driving a west coast drive with um different components located in different corners of the robot is just a big pain um but i thought that it was a really well-made robot it looks very nice it may look a bit clunky at the first glance but then the more you get to look at this robot it really becomes a bit more impressive yeah matt uh, so my first thought was, speaking as someone who does robot inspection, that inspecting this robot and watching it on the field was going to be absolutely wild. Um, it's it's a pretty unique concept, to say the least. Um, I would honestly, I don't know that I have a whole lot to add that hasn't already been said, but this is a robot that I would certainly remember if I ever saw it competing, and, and I would love to see something like this fielded. Yeah. And Mr. N. Yeah, here, I'm just going to read what I wrote. Wow, this one made me laugh in a good way. <laughs> Very unique approach to all the game problems, and almost nothing on here is repeated on, on any of the other robots that I've seen for this competition. I love it. Okay, and that's going to move us to our eighth ranked team, Team 617, the 1086 Shop Dog. And this is our highest ranked solo team from Jack. Could you kick it off, Brant? Yeah, so originally when I saw this robot, um, it was just in the middle of my judging pool, and I was like, oh, this is just uh, another robot that looks like it can do some weights, looks like it has a bit of a shooter. But then the more I read into their scouting document, just the more I looked into the STL file, or sorry, step file, um, it really was an impressive robot, and everything, and when I say everything, everything was thought about in this robot. Um, from basically just holding the weights and the stall torque on the elevator uh, motors, they actually added a ball shifter brake um, into uh, the gearbox. I thought that was really impressive um, to the catapult. I'm going to let Parker talk about that since he was trying to talk about that um, last uh, one. But the cam inside of the uh, catapult was really impressive. I thought the intake looked nice. And also you... I'm just going to reflect off of what their um, scouting sheet said, but they don't have that big of a hopper. And the main reason for that, um, which was kind of a negative in my opinion at the start, is that they said that they'd just be cycling hopefully fast enough to where they didn't want to deal with a big hopper, deal with a ton of balls at a time, which I thought personally was very, very smart, good, very good idea. Because as I said earlier, um, those consistent shots are better than shooting like six balls at a time. So I really like the strategy there of maybe holding only three balls at a time um, and shooting those really consistently. But overall, you know, this robot first glance doesn't really look like it's anything too crazy, but the more you look into it, um, hopefully they release it on Chief Delphire somewhere. Um, the more impressive this robot truly does get. The one concern that I did have, though, is that um, the electronics look very, very hard to access. But yeah. Yeah. All right, Mr. N. So um, I, I compared the, uh, the pan for getting the weights to a pooper scooper. Um, and I, at first I wasn't convinced of that. This is, I had sort of the same reaction at first. I looked at it and said, this is, this is sort of a normal average robot, but the more I looked at it, the better it got. Um, the, uh, the, the scoop for the weights seems to be based more off of uh, something that I saw in 1619's robot in 2018, um, which ended up being really, really effective. So I do like that. Um, catapult again that may be a, a very effective way to play this game and because this catapult has a short throw arm I think it's going to be better at reloading more quickly so I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that yeah uh, Matt yeah pretty impressive robot a lot of really good packaging uh, I thought the way they did their gearboxes was pretty impressive and you know that uh, cam catapult was something I definitely uh, had not seen before the one thing I think on this robot that I had some trouble believing was the uh, feeding to get footballs into that catapult. Um, this, it kind of seemed to me like there was a lot that was being left up to chance. There were only two belts in that whole assembly and kind of no real guarantee that the balls were going to go where you wanted them to go in a timely manner. So uh, I thought it was, even though that was a little bit unconstrained, uh, the rest of the robot was very well thought out and certainly very creative. And Parker. Yeah, the gearbox design was awesome. Uh, that was a really kind of the highlight. Uh, their scouting sheet also was a really good one that kind of helped explain how good the robot was and really highlighted some of the the, the, the things they wanted to see. And yeah, the cam catapult, uh, 
that's that would be a lot faster than some of the other methods and i really liked it yeah and i know you mentioned whether you were never sure to see a cam in use in that kind of a cam catapult in use in frc and i can remember from 2014 2014 uh, yeah uh, Cybertooth yeah. used one, so that's I, there might have been other teams who used them, um, but I remember I remember Cybertooth using them pretty pretty vividly my freshman year. There were um, a lot of teams using them in 2014, that's for sure. Yeah. Yep. All right, that's going to move us to our seventh ranked, which is Team 438, the Cheesy Oofs, affiliated with Team 254. Can you kick us off, Matt? Yeah. So uh, taking a look at this robot, it didn't immediately stand out to me as being hugely creative. Uh, but the more I thought about the way it was designed around how to move balls off of the field into the robot and through the goal, uh, the more I liked it. So um, I did like having a dual intake on both sides of the robot. That was something that we haven't seen a whole lot of in FRC that I can remember uh, probably since 2012. Uh, was the last time that I remember seeing a lot of those intakes being filled in on robots. Uh, it was pretty cool. I did like the weight claw. Um, I thought it was potentially a little bit underbuilt, but in general, uh, this was, I thought, a very well-executed robot um, and very standard kind of FRC, do-what-you-know-works type of design. All right, Mr. Um, Nicely detailed and generically excellent. It was pretty easy to tell that this was a 254 robot. Um, Just opening it up, and you can see that they've got the details thought out. One thing that was a interesting for me is that I'm used to 254 uh, students having the approach of uh, we will always drive West Coast and for them to for them to uh, look at this game and say yes we we need to put swerve drive on it you know uh, they're an excellent team they got excellent kids they do excellent design work but uh, it didn't didn't have a whole lot of more creative elements to it I still loved it Parker yeah, uh, same kind of thing. Uh, it, it was solid. Uh, the the dual sided intake um, uh, it was well executed. I'm not sure how much value it genuinely adds. There's some, of course, uh, but um, that wasn't like a wow, you know, two sided intake. Finally, some team did this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, the the swerve uh, was was kind of the, the the one thing that didn't seem just as generic and and reliable. But yeah, it was a bit conservative, but well executed. And Brent. Yeah. So um, whenever I first noticed this robot, I noticed the swerve drive, and I was like, "Geez, that kind of uh, doesn't look like many swerve drives I've seen before." Um, so it was a differential swerve drive, which I thought was uh, really interesting. Um, something that you know we don't see a lot of in FRC for reasons I'll get into later, um, but something that you see a bit more in FTC. Um, but I even like the complexity in the swerve drive was amazing. I even looked back in their files to see whenever the swerve drive was made, um, the date that the part was made. Um, because I just like truly didn't believe that they made this all in a week. Um, and in fact, if anybody is curious, they didn't make it within the constraints of the competition. <laughs> um, but overall, I really liked the robot. The one concern that I did have with the swerve drive is they do have all their swerve drives motor motors wired to the high power rail because it is a differential swerve drive. Um, so all those motors are uh, drive motors and so therefore that means that your shooter motors are not on high power rails which is just kind of a concerning thing for me I usually think that you want your shooter to be on a high power rail instead of one of the low power rails um, on the PDP um, so that's just a really small thing um, just effectiveness in uh, real life but I really like the detail um, and one other thing that I just thought was really cool very small thing is they took the time to basically underneath the shooter there's a little plate down there and there were these little strips and I was like oh what are those and they're actually Teflon Teflon is just like a very slippery type of plastic and I thought that, that was really smart they even thought down to like the type of material to put underneath the shooter wheel um, in order to shoot. So I thought it was a crazy detail, something that you'd expect to see from a team like 254. Um, but great job, guys. Yeah. All right. That's going to move us to our sixth ranked team, Team 345, the Bench Bots from Kevin, Matthew, and LM Emiliano. Starting off, let's have Mr. Ann talk about it. Yeah. So um, first of all, it's, it's interesting to see how different teams have been influenced by past year's robots. And this one is clearly, I mean, it's straight out of 2017. It's the shopping cart from 254. Um, they've got all the graphics on there as well. 
So what I, what I felt from this robot, um, it looks more like uh, something that you would actually see in a real competition than an off-season fun project. Um, it, even though it feels like the shopping cart concept was kind of handed to them, I was wondering if anybody would get around to using that idea in a game where you have such large capacity possible. And one of the things that uh, teams in 2017 struggled with was sort of limiting themselves and saying, well, I'm, we're only going to build a robot that can handle you know X number of balls because of our, our size constraints. Uh, the shopping cart works to solve that problem. And this had the largest capacity of any of the robots that I looked at. Um, I also think that the weight mechanism on this robot is one of the better ones. It definitely doesn't have that crazy long moment arm. It looks like it's going to be able to handle uh, the weight much more effectively than most of the other robots in this competition. So it's a good looking robot. Parker? Yeah. Um, one thing that I just, just can say is that yeah, capacity does not get you points. Uh, shooting and scoring gets you points. And while the uh, intake and the capacity was pretty good, I feel that feeding into the shooter with something that big with such a football-y shaped uh, objects is uh, <laughs> it, it would, would prove a bit more challenging than just kind of the standard you know FRC round ball. Um, but the the weight arm was really good, and the whole thing was nicely packaged. And you said, yeah, this is more something you'd expect out of this was. It didn't feel like just a catathon robot. It felt like something that was that could be built and was intended to be built. Brent? Yeah, I thought this robot was uh, just kind of really impressive in general. I'm going to probably echo what um, Parker just said a lot. Parker kind of stole all the points that I had, but I'll go ahead and echo them just real quick. I think that, just like he said, just shooting a ton of balls versus um, actually making them is a big difference. I wish that they maybe would have focused a bit more on making a shooter that looks like it would work a bit better than um, this one. I personally don't have a ton of faith in it but you know not saying that just because i don't have faith in it it won't be able to work but the weight on arm on the back was very impressive um really liked the uh almost uh it's almost reminds me of it's not the elevator isn't connected off in the top um so it reminds me of like two telescoping arms on the side um so i really liked that i thought that was pretty innovative that they didn't necessarily connect it on the top um and i really liked the grabber so overall uh, nice job guys really liked uh, all the gear boxes and uh custom made parts in this and Matt yeah so uh, I mean I think when you look at the robot, you can definitely see where it's taking its inspiration from um, but that said the sheer like level of packaging that's present on this robot just completely blew me away uh, something that is easy to miss when you first look at it is the fact that the shooter flywheel is powered internally like they placed the motor for that wheel inside the roller uh, right. And it's spinning around this bearing assembly. I, you know, I would believe that works when I see it, but that was certainly a very creative way of approaching um, that problem. But there was just so much going on with this robot. There was a lot to dive into. Uh, and the other thing I really wanted to call these guys out for was the phenomenal professional uh, packaging of their scouting document. Uh, I hope that's something that's going to be released because I think that every... Uh, Catathon team certainly, but even normal FRC teams could learn a lot from looking at that document. Uh, that looked straight out of uh, the lab at 254 to me. Yeah. All one, right, that's going to move uh, can, I, oh. can I chime in real quick? Uh, sorry, yeah. I just wanted, as he talked about scouting documents, also we saw a couple teams ago, the 254 scouting document was truly, the like actual Team 254 uh, scouting document was insane. Um, getting to read that and the different simulations that they did to calculate how long their cycles would be um, was amazing. So I thought that they did a really good job on that. Sorry, I forgot that, going back a little bit. Yeah, no, it's great. And, you know, hopefully teams do release some of this stuff so that you can take a look and see how, you know, some of the best Catathon teams uh, figured out their strategy. Because there's a lot of thought that goes into not only the CAD, but the strategy of these robots that I think does get lost sometimes in translation. Um, so hopefully, you know, teams release that and people can take a look. This video is brought to you in part by PTC. Look, during this time, it's important to look for challenges to keep your skills up and to help your team in fun development. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge can help you accomplish both by designing a robot that solves a real-world problem with a chance to win a share of over $7,000 for your team. Click the link in the description to get started at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.
Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.